bienvenido. If you're getting excited for the upcoming holiday season or you're already dreading it, well, welcome to you. Bienvenido. If you struggle with your mental health or you support someone who struggles with their mental health, welcome to you. If you live with a disability, welcome to them. If you're a believer, a questioner, or a questioning believer, welcome into this space. As we enter into a space for contemplation and reflection, let us know with our hearts, our minds, our bodies, that no matter where we are, God is still with us through this time. Let's listen to God still speaking to us in our time. remain standing. We want to invite you to join us in passing the peace this morning. If you're in church and you do not want people to come towards you physically, you can just hold out a peace sign because our peace sign in this space also means please stay away from my personal bubble. If you're at home, please send a peace note. Let's treat one another with signs of God's presence in this place.
everyone, if you are in church physically this morning, I want to invite you to slowly start making your way back to your seat as much as us. If you're at home, we want to make sure you do know that you can sing peace to someone from your seat where you're sitting on your floor. If you're sitting on the floor, if you're standing chopping vegetables for lunch, send a note and check out your phone. Use the messaging icon on Facebook. If you make a, a physical note, make sure you have a plan of where you'll take that note. You can put it in the form of a link or a letter to us. We invite you to join us in the order of prayer. God, you are good. Just bless your heart and your word and your life this morning. Please stand and give me God's own glory. Almighty and majestic God, leader of the drums of your people, we honor you. you to join us in moments of confession. Almighty God, mystery of mercy, giver of grace, you are calling us to your table, but we have often pursued our own course. You have promised us the abundance of all of your creation, but in our greed and in our envy, the world goes this route. You have promised us the bread of life itself, but in our pride, and in our arrogance, the world has grown hungry. You have promised us the waters of peace and justice, but in our violence and in our discord, the world is thirsty. And now we see ourselves as sinners, sinners, O oh God. Have mercy on us, forgive us again. Hear your people in silence as we pray. Transform us at your table for this love, your love. Send us as servants of holy righteousness by the power of Christ. Amen. Grace Spirit of Truth, we return to the Good Friday Liturgy, set our hearts to worship so that we may become saints and virtuous. Thank you. 
surprised to find out that at least one person or two from our beloved Lectio Divina Bible study picked up on the absence of the Zacchaeus story from our reading last week. It was actually the gospel reading last Sunday. It's a noteworthy scripture for us today. Almost as beloved to some as the Good Samaritan, the Passion narrative, or the stories of Jesus' birth. There's something about this little guy climbing up in a tree that delights our imagination. It kind of tickles the things uh, that interest the little guy into and curiosity. And it moves our heart. Perhaps it is his slight stature or his eventual commitment to faith. Whatever it is, the story of Zacchaeus has captivated Protestant Christians and the teachings of Protestant Christians for decades, likely centuries. And I would guess the same is true in the Catholic Church. In fact, I couldn't resist but to request that our beloved Faith Formation Director, Jen, teach the children today the Zacchaeus children's tune, which I would guess some of y'all know. Anybody know that tune? Okay, yes, we know it. Some of us know it. If you don't know the tune, then no need to worry. You might be bummed that there is no coffee hour today, but the children are learning it, and you can hop down to the lower level of this beloved building right after church to hear the Zacchaeus tune if you don't know it. A brief performance in lieu of coffee hour today. As we look at the text, we see that the story of Zacchaeus may indeed invite us to think of the ways that we approach the communion table, that we come to a sacred meal. As the New Oxford Annotated Bible reminds us, Zacchaeus goes above and beyond what would have been called for by law to make amends and to right the wrongs that he has done. The amount that he says he will repay four times as much is 20% higher then the law would have required him to repay the people he had wronged. So what can we assume knowing this? We can assume that Zacchaeus truly saw the error of his ways. It was not just his eyes and his ears that were open to this person, Jesus of Nazareth. His heart had been opened by Jesus' demand to visit his home. It might help our understanding to know that Jericho, this place that Jesus is passing through, was a place of great commerce. Zacchaeus was conducting his dishonorable transactions among many, many people and had likely benefited substantially from this. The key part of the text this morning is the way that Zacchaeus repents 
turns away from the things that he has done that were wrong. We have to pay attention to the fact that it is Jesus' presence with Zacchaeus that is what leads him to transformation. Zacchaeus would not have been transformed had Jesus not noticed the way that he was in need of spiritual reformation, transformation. The good news today is that the divine relationship comes to the ones, especially the ones who are experiencing or who have done wrong. Jesus goes to the people who are in need. And we are people who are in need and the world is in need. So four times as much to Zacchaeus and four times as much Jesus comes to us when we go astray. Consider the way that the shepherd in the parable leaves the herd to find the one sheep who was lost and alone. I think that was uh, up on the lectionary not too long ago. We spoke about it. Four times as much God is with us when we are distraught. Four times as much God is with us when we feel completely alone. Four times as much God is with the ones who are experiencing oppression, being cast aside by society over and over. And so four times as much we work to think through what the communion table means to us as repentance and turning towards God will change and shape our lives. I like to imagine that Zacchaeus might have had a tough time getting up into that sycamore tree that day. Jesus passed by, and he insisted on going to Zacchaeus' home. I imagine that on the way up the sycamore tree, Zacchaeus even perhaps hung onto a limb, struggling to find the upper body strength to pull himself up, his shorter legs dangling in a slightly dangerous way. Zacchaeus hanging by his arms, not yet understanding the transformation he was about to experience, but still holding on to some faith. Zacchaeus held on to the limb of the sycamore, not knowing that his holding on to a tree was actually a symbol of how even he had the faith that he was clinging on to, propelling him forward in the smallest way. And so four times as much, God, the divine, Jesus moved towards Zacchaeus. And so today I am wondering if it isn't the case that four times as much, God is seeking out those of us who are terrified about the elections and about the future of our country. I am wondering if God is four times as much with those of us who have or do struggle with addiction. I am wondering if God is four times as much with those of us who have been cast aside, perhaps simply from our families, because of some small disagreement and we're anxious about going to Thanksgiving dinner. I am wondering if we realize that whatever the amount is that we think God seeks us out, that it is actually an infinitely larger degree to which God calls out to us. That is the truth of the sacred meal. We work to humbly repent each day, each week, each month, knowing that God calls out to us as beloved children. As Cheryl A. Lindsay reflects on this text, she reminds us, Jesus attracted people in need of redemption, of restoration, and of repair. And I add to this notion, this simple part of the scripture, four times as much. Four times as much for those of us who need redemption because we, like Zacchaeus, have been like a chief tax collector in the first century. Four times as much for those of us who need restoration. We feel stuck and we don't think we can change, but in fact we can. Four times as much for those of us who feel that we need to be repaired. These are the degrees to which God is coming for us. This is the amount of love that Jesus brought to earth. 
Really, it is not a mathematical sum or a number. The love that God brings goes above and beyond the most beautiful mysteries of life, beyond human comprehension. So today, know that the sacred meal is for you. No matter what your experience has been, divine transformation can be yours on this very day. Find yourself as redeemed, restored, and repaired today. I pray that it will be so for all of us. We invite you to join us in hymn number 254 in the red hymnal. Uh, please rise as you're able and led. Please be seated. Friends and family of faith, people of the word, the gospel shows us that love affirms us to our very core, invites us to walk with God, and compels us to bring hope out into the world. This table is here to remind all of us of unending and ineffable or indescribable love. That which we can accept and then take out from this space. This love calls us by name and offers us resilience if we can grab onto it. This is Christ's table, that which may restore who we are and how we treat one another. For this table and God's realm, there are no prerequisites for God's kingdom. This table is for you whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you need community or you need solace. You can share of this table. It's totally open. We invite you to join us in a communion prayer. And if you want to, you can hold your hands out. We bless the meal together in a congregational setting. Please join me in prayer. We give you thanks, creator on high, for you have also come to be among us. You have called us forth from this world as your people. A holy God, you are raising us from dust by the breath of being. We bless you, God, for the beauty and bounty of the earth, for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. 
God, we remember the covenant that you made with your people, Israel. And we give you thanks for all of our ancestors in the faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and with all people everywhere. We are so grateful that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. God, bless this meal and each one of us so that we may live in hope and we may live out our faith in our daily lives. We pray all this for love's sake and in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was with his friends, as many of you have read and have heard, in an upper room. Jesus was working to give the gift of faith that could not be taken away by any power or principality on earth. A gift of family that would extend farther than anyone could imagine. The disciples would not truly be able to understand this until later. But even still, Jesus, after supper, took bread and he broke it. And in doing this, Jesus reminded them that in serving others, we will be so able to go into the world and we will be able to more closely encounter the Spirit. Jesus said, this is my body. This is broken for you. Take and eat. Remember me, Jesus said, this is the bread of heaven given so that we may live and be with love and held. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, blessed the cup, and poured the wine, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, new covenant given in my blood. This cup is for the forgiveness of sins so that all may live and be transformed. Take this too, drink, and remember me. And so, being reminded of these historic words, we today are invited to humbly come forward for a sacred meal. We ask that during communion, you wait until the shepherds, excuse me, the ushers will shepherd you forward. <laughs> these are metaphoric shepherds. They will, they will invite you to come forward to the table. And we also ask that the choir please wait to come forward until all the others gathered have received communion. We, the congregation, we have blessed the meal. All is ready. uniformity. Let us take and eat and let us drink from the cup of life.
not uniformity. Let us take and eat the bread of heaven and let us drink from the cup of life. Please join me in the prayer of thanks. Holy One, by coming to your table, we receive from your great abundance. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, through whom we receive life, and in whom we are bound in covenant. Renew us, we pray, so that we may serve as Christ served. Amen. In our humble offerings, we work to repair. Repair the world, repair ourselves, repair others, and bring liberation to those who feel or are imprisoned. Join our effort this morning and know that God will multiply your gifts. 
if you're at home and you need to learn more about, or I should say want to learn more about how to give, um, go to uccplymouth.org forward slash give, and you'll find the information that you need there. Uh, if you're sending a check, make sure you send it to post office box 86 rather than our physical address. If you're here in church and you are not able to contribute financially, the plates will be passed. Know that you can still extend your hand and you can imagine the thing which you will give someone else or the world this week. Feel free, extend your hand and think of that thing that you will provide for others. Know that as you give, you give love to the whole world. We invite you to join us this morning.
please join me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, you create more than we could ever hope to return. You share more than we could ever hope to deserve. And yet, we pray, accept these humble gifts. May they honor and glorify you in all creation. And may they empower us for the work of witness and service, for the sake of justice, and for the sake of peace, now and forever. Amen. We are a praying congregation, we, and we invite you to join us in a spirit of prayer no matter where you're at physically. Um, if you're on Facebook and you want to lift up a prayer of joy or concern, we encourage you to do so. Please know that if you uh, leave a comment on Facebook, again, it's not private. So if you have something that's more personal, you want our office to know about, and then um, get the information out in a smaller electronic format, just send us an email. Um, office at uccplymouth.org, and we'll do our best to get that out to our congregation locally. Uh, there is a list of folks in our bulletin, as you likely noticed. If you haven't, it's in there. Uh, we encourage you to incorporate the folks who are there or the situations that are there into your prayer practice, whatever it may be. And we call all these folks to to mind. Um, and we are we are thinking about Alice, and we hope that um, I know that you've been visiting her a lot, Georgine, and I just I express you know, joy to you for that, for your ministry in that way. Um, and so here we are, beloved. I wonder if there are any prayers you want to lift up that are not listed. Yes. Dan Hale and lost his son. His brother. His brother. Okay, forgive me. Uh, lost his brother last week, and his name is Dan Hell. Yes, I apologize. That's my southern accent. H A L E is his last name. <laughs> oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. Yes. Anne and Sue are both struggling with knee replacements. So, Anne and Sue. Oh God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. For all of these and for others that are not, uh, not li lifted today but are in our hearts and minds, let's turn to God in silent prayer. Creator God, you are calling us to our faith to a walk with you day by day, moment by moment. Let us move in this rather than with fear. We come with some gratitude, God, for we have received blessings through your holy meal. We've been called forth by your word and are given opportunities to share with the world. Let these moments of shared joy, of some challenge, and of sweetness of community carry us through our week. Holy One, allow us space to let ourselves be redeemed, restored, and repaired. Let us take heart in being true to our own struggles. Let us remember your path as we encounter those who are in need around us. Let us remember that we are in need too. God, as you hear our gratitude and our hopes, we know that you also long to hear our anxieties held in the deep recesses of our hearts. So God, we come to you praying for those who struggle with mental illness and for those who support their family, their friends. We pray for people struggling with addiction as well as those who are close to them and supporting them. We lift up those who are persecuted by oppression, who are harmed by war, and who are hungry in a world that does indeed have enough food. God, we're praying for an end to violence, for an end to racist policies, we pray that our government leaders will faithfully consider reparations as a way to move forward in seeking racial justice. God, let there be a deep call for each of us. Let us consider caring for your earth, 
paying attention to policies, using our vote as an action. We pray that we will all work to break down barriers to health care of all forms. Holy One, let us recall your words, for what you said was, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So God, let us know that we may be hidden by your great shadow of protection, and let us give, be given charge on this very day. So hear us, God, as we dare to utter the words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to invite you to join us in one more song of praise and thanksgiving. This is in the Black Hymnal, number 36. We'll sing verses 3 through 6. Uh, please rise as you're able to God compose a song of joy. Remember this week that the love of God is infinite and that it is for you. So as you go tend the sick, share a meal, even if from afar or over the phone. If people ask you where you've come from, say to them that you're God's child and that you have seen love in Christ. Please be seated. Amen. 